As the world keeps pushing us apart, games keep pulling us back together. More time at home with family or friends means more stress, but also more time for video games. Only a few of our categories had a clear winner, and settling on a goatee took a considerable amount of time, to say nothing of selecting the top awards 10 nominees. This was a strange but altogether excellent year for this industry, and we believe our picks reflect our hearts and dreams, and how they were changed by some of the best games we've ever played. If you want to get the whole story, we've also posted our 8-hour deliberations where you can witness the painful process of saying what we ultimately liked more than what. If you want to know the winners, plain and simple, here's a rapid-fire list of our full honors, including Easy Allies 2021 Game of the Year. Best Boss Fight The nominees are Heart-pounding action and thrilling encounters are a common occurrence in Returnal, but Hyperion serves as its most sinister challenge. Set upon a high tower, Hyperion rains destruction down upon Selene with a haunting song of death that would make any bullet hell blush. In a game with so much creativity, the interstellar showdown with Moon Baboon shines as a beacon of excellence. It relentlessly introduces new and exciting ideas for each player and makes you truly feel like you're working as a team. Serving as the culmination of the entire game, Ravenbeak is a menacing and intimidating figure. In an already challenging game, Ravenbeak will put your skills to the test and push you to adapt and overcome. Cert is all about presence. Able to swat down multiple enemies like they're little more than flies, you learn about Cert's power well before you fight him, which creates an excellent and intimidating buildup to the actual confrontation. Vice is the ultimate challenge for Cloud and Company. He's a brutal opponent that can make quick work of you if you're not prepared, but he's also one of the most rewarding and engaging fights around. And the winner is Raven Peak from Metroid Dread. Best Competitive Multiplayer. The nominees are Somehow both humorously chaotic and extremely intense, Chivalry 2 provides an uproariously good time, regardless of skill level. Guilty Gear Strive successfully confronts the consistent problem of fighting game accessibility, and it's as enjoyable to play as it is to look at. Halo came back with a vengeance this year after we finally got our hands on Halo Infinite. The open world campaign takes the outstanding core of the series and broadens it to great success, while the multiplayer has us addicted to slaying. Knockout City has a simple concept that's easy to understand. Once you start learning the nuances of ball control, skill and teamwork are expertly highlighted, making each victory feel well-earned. Mario Party Superstar serves as a triumphant greatest hits outing for the series, once again showing us the jubilant highs and frustrating lows of this creative virtual board game. And the winner is Guilty Gear Strive. Best Cooperative Multiplayer. The nominees are... By now, Final Fantasy XIV is well known for its inviting community and plethora of activities that allow friends and strangers to team up for untold adventures. Endwalker continues the streak of excellence with even more inviting dungeons, bosses, and raids to tackle together, as well as more laid-back attractions like grouping up to explore hidden treasure maps for a chance to test your luck for rare prizes. The newest entry in the Dark Pictures anthology, House of Ashes, is the best yet, thanks to an impactful setting and overarching plot threads. Getting a group of companions together for the movie night mode, in which you pass the controller around, is both lighthearted and high stakes, thanks to life-threatening decisions and white-knuckle quick-time events. It Takes Two is a co-op showpiece, flawlessly navigating emotional themes with a steady flow of new gameplay mechanics. Whoever you play with, a family member, a friend, or a significant other that has never played a video game, the power of connection and cooperation is masterfully showcased. The simple pleasure of pummeling a beast together with friends in Monster Hunter Rise isn't new for the series, but it remains the most fun way to hunt. The new Wirebug adds depth to traversal and combat, while 50-member squads highlight the dedicated and friendly community. Streets of Rage 4 is an excellent beat-em-up made even better by the stellar DLC Mr. X Nightmare. New characters, moves, music, and weapons are all there, but it's the new survival mode that emphasizes teamwork and potentially paves the way for the future of the franchise. Sharing or stacking power-ups adds an extra level of strategy missing from the base game. And the winner is... It Takes Two. Best World Design. The nominees are... 
When you think of Hitman 3, you probably think of moving through the intricate levels, setting outlandish traps to ensnare unsuspecting targets. Whether it's a hidden lab, a bustling street, or a bona fide murder mystery mansion, the design of Hitman stages is a huge part of why playing this game feels so rewarding. It's difficult to talk about what makes Inscription's design so special without getting into spoiler territory, so let's just say it starts off amazingly creepy, eerily detailed, and immensely surprising. And that's before it starts to completely reinvent itself in every way imaginable. We're still in awe that Outer Wilds even runs. A staggering amount of physics simulation with multiple worlds working together like clockwork coalesces in this time-looping puzzler. It seemed impossible that developer Mobius could add to it without upsetting this delicate balance, but Echoes of the Eye feels like it was there from the very beginning. In Outer Wilds, the world itself is the puzzle, the story, and the challenge. And this massive expansion is no exception. The amount of imagination on display in Psychonauts 2 is almost unbelievable. This game manages to fit in many, many mental dreamscapes, all while maintaining a cohesive vibe and moving narrative. Raz's journey is full of surprises, and every new mind we enter, every new world, feels like a wonderfully realized and expertly designed wonderland. Returnal's gameplay depends on its world. The ever-shifting landscape of Atropos forms the skeleton of the game's intrigue, story, and frantic moment-to-moment -moment excitement. Where other roguelites might grow stale, Atropos always keeps you on your swiftly dodging toes in a fragile dance between risk and enticement. And the winner is Outer Wilds Echoes of the Eye. While awards are typically reserved for the best of the best, sometimes there's a sense of coziness that comes with getting into a game that isn't burdened with high expectations. The following games all fell into the 7 range on our review scale, but are still easy to recommend and worth highlighting. The nominees are... Several games scratched that psychological horror itch this year, including In Sound Mind, where you play as a therapist whose patient's mental struggles have manifested into terrifying worlds. It continually sidesteps expectations without relying on jump scares, and has some great songs to boot. Square Enix continues to take new approaches with reviving its catalog of mana games, and Legend of Mana takes a more faithful direction while redrawing its backgrounds in gorgeous detail. Whether you've played it before or it's your first time, it's a great way to experience a beloved classic. Maquette is an introspective puzzle game that sparks the imagination with its recursive world playing on size and perspective. Tying it all together is a heartfelt story following a relationship's ups and downs as fresh love eventually becomes familiar and strained. In a live service world, it's hard for a shooter to stand out with an experience that's actually meant to be finished and complete, but Outriders is still a good way to gather up a couple buds and blast some baddies together. The strong class system and distinctive weapon mods make room for each player to feel like they have a role to play on the team. While it may not have the budget of contemporaries like Tales of Arise or SMT5, Ease 9 is a JRPG that you really shouldn't miss. Quick movement and traversal abilities provide a solid platforming element to exploration. Combat is fast and engaging, there are bonds that form with the cast that make rejoining them each night to tackle the next mystery feel like settling in with a warm blanket. And the winner is... Ease 9, Monstrum Knox. Stand ready! Lay waste to the malevolent, lest the night prevail. Best Remaster or Remake? The nominees are... Adding a controller option and the ability to resurrect age-old save files, Diablo 2 Resurrected really fires up that classic Blizzard nostalgia when you switch back and forth between the original graphics and the stunning updated engine. We're always down to party, but Mario Party Superstars finally remixes the original formula to deliver a package that's both memorable and fresh, with minigames spanning decades of the classic party games. Anyone longing to relive their Normandy days from a few generations past got their sweeping space saga properly remastered with Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Three incredible journeys in one. Old gems known more for their creative liberties than their production values rarely get the remaster treatment, but Near Replicant is a special case. It's a gift for longtime fans and anyone willing to give the franchise a first try. Playing Resident Evil 4 is like touring a virtual gaming museum. The gunplay is as precise as it's always been, and the gritty horror gets right in your face. But the real satisfaction comes from stepping into one of the greats and reliving every moment like never before. And the winner is Resident Evil 4 VR. Best Additional Content. And the nominees are... 
We weren't expecting to revisit Final Fantasy VII Remake so soon, but the classic Intergrade version gives us not only enhanced visuals and faster loading times, but also marks the release of an additional story mode, featuring a playable Yuffie with fantastic new combat mechanics. Plus, it has Fort Condor, one of the most addictive minigames of the year. The developers behind Endwalker bill it as more than a mere expansion, boasting a playtime comparable to a AAA RPG. They did not exaggerate. It's quite possibly the most comprehensive expansion to a game ever seen, yet it upholds the exceptional standards of its predecessors with an excellent narrative, captivating worlds, and incredible battles. Ghost of Tsushima's Iki Island delves further into the past of the fascinating Jin Sakai. It serves as a wonderful new act that perfectly complements the existing narrative while adding a captivating new environment that's downright gorgeous. Exploring an entire solar system while trying to solve an intricate mystery where nearly every element is meticulously calculated is already an impressive accomplishment, yet somehow Outer Wilds Echoes of the Eye manages to seamlessly weave in a massive new world with its own jaw-dropping moments and mechanics. It's not often a piece of additional content overshadows the core game, but that's exactly the case when it comes to Bowser's Fury. Super Mario 3D World is a phenomenal platformer, but this new mode illustrates the endless potential and wonders of an open-world Mario game, and it's left us eagerly awaiting more. And the winner is Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. <laughs> the hour has come, Vritra! It's all or nothing! Best game to play in one night. And the nominees are... Legacy can be a curse, and maybe you don't really like folk music that much. Francis Fendetti faces a struggle for creativity and somehow finds his musical identity in a trip across the galaxy. The artful escape is not only thoughtful and well-acted, but full of psychedelic creativity, taking you on a roller coaster of sights and sounds that defy description. It may sound like a gimmick, but playing a game simply by blinking is surprisingly effective. Before Your Eyes is brief but powerful, eliciting an upwelling of emotion that we won't soon forget. Supermassive series of interactive horror flicks has been a guilty pleasure since Until Dawn, but this year's House of Ashes truly feels like a step up from previous games in the Dark Pictures anthology. Its movie night mode where you pass the controller among a group of friends is like few other experiences, and it's worth popping some popcorn and staying up late. Don't feel like an outsider if you're not familiar with the franchise. Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth is worth picking out among the crowd of Metroidvanias, really embodying the spirit of Symphony of the Night with a variety of weapons and spirits to experiment with. It's been a good year for virtual photographers, and Toem takes you on a cute journey, snapping photos for bus fares to take you on further adventures. With loads of things to photograph and Easter eggs to discover, you can spend a bit more time in Toem if you wish, or you can get a snapshot of what the game has to offer in a few hours. And the winner is... House of Ashes. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was Rationalize dead no matter it, what. Rationalize it. You just killed him. That man. was heavy. Best character. The nominees are. Like many protagonists in the Life is Strange series, Alex Chen simply wanted a fresh start, but she must instead grapple with grief and mysterious abilities she can barely control. Alex's wit and tough outer shell hide a sensitive and passionate woman who is struggling to learn to value her own emotional needs, as well as those of everyone around her. We'll avoid specifics in case you're a few hundred hours behind on your FF14, but Emmett Selk is a magnificent example of excellent villaindom. He is complex, principled, sensitive, and perhaps surprisingly, he abhors lying. His long and storied life already makes him a fascinating character, but while Shadowbringers may have been his time in the sun, he still shines bright in N. Walker. Jean-Baptiste VI, or Fu to his friends, the sadistic villain of No More Heroes 3, starts his life like many gleeful murderers as a cute and cuddly little fuzzball. After a few years abroad, he returns to Earth a twisted, quote-unquote, superhero, bent on power, destruction, and staying on top of the galactic hero rankings. Whether he's nuking a city, ripping someone limb from limb, or just cracking wise, he's always a blast to watch. A literal living weapon, Master Chief is rarely given time to show his softer side. And while his softer side is still about as soft as a box full of dryly humorous nails, he gets to stretch a little in Halo Infinite, showing surprising vulnerability for a super soldier who's been left for dead, floating like space debris for six months. From the very start of Returnal, there's a mysterious gravity to Selene. Something about her pained voice logs and breathless asides belies a hidden depth, an unsettling edge. These dark waters run deep, and Selene's character is a whirlpool, pulling us ever under. And the winner is Selene from Returnal.
Best Narrative, and the nominees are Endwalker masterfully ties together almost a decade of story, characters, and twists into a satisfying conclusion. The writers expertly subvert your expectations, leaving you gasping early and often in disbelief at what unfolds before your eyes. Yes, the time commitment is steep, but it's some of the best storytelling in this medium. Full stop. While most of this year's nominees achieve narrative excellence in the traditional sense, inscription storytelling bonds to every facet of its disturbing existence. Every action you take brings new information about your dire circumstances, and just when you think you have things figured out, the game delights in turning everything you thought you knew on its head. There are precious few games out there that help you deal with overcoming grief, but Alex Chen's emotional journey and Life is Strange True Colors gives us hope. The bonds she builds in the wake of her own personal tragedy makes for one of the most heartfelt stories of the year. Sometimes a sequel truly rises above the original and elevates it. So much of Psychonauts 2's DNA exists in service of crafting an emotionally charged narrative, something many games struggle to accomplish. It never falters in its balancing act of devising lighthearted bits of comedy while simultaneously tackling serious issues with impressive tact. Returnal relies on its roguelite nature of live, die, repeat to form its narrative core, expertly driving home Celine's own struggles as she tries to piece together the complex truth of her situation. Her journey leaves you with just as many questions as answers, leading you to realize that sometimes in life, there are things we'll never fully understand. And the winner is Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. Take a deep breath, and I'll soon have you soaring through the ether. Best Weapon. The nominees are... The titular Fist plays a central role in Fist Forged in Shadow Torch. Its brutish charm and simplicity are highlighted by forceful, deliberate attacks that pummel foes across the environment. Returnal has an incredible arsenal of weaponry, but the Hollow Seeker is the most impactful. An alien machine gun of unknown origin, the extreme rate of fire is wonderfully conveyed through the dual sense, while a steady dose of upgrades add energy waves and portal turrets capable of decimating a small army. Magnums are a hallmark of the Resident Evil franchise, and Capcom has truly outdone themselves with the M1851 Wolvesbane. The elegant revolver packs a punch even against the toughest foes roaming the village, and the Latin inscription on the barrel translated to, Thy will be done, is an empowering mantra. Ratchet & Clank is synonymous with over-the-top weapons, and even with those sky-high expectations, the Negatron Collider is one of the series' best. Its concept is simple, as each shot fires an energy stream capable of whittling down tough enemies or clearing up swarms of weaker ones. On paper, it doesn't sound like much, but the feeling behind each pull of the trigger is addicting and memorable. Halo Infinite has a handful of new and returning weapons from Master Chief's story past. Most notably, the Skewer, an anti-vehicle powerhouse that fires a massive spike capable of obliterating anything it comes into contact with. Things get even more intense in multiplayer, where one spike is enough to kill anything that moves, but the lengthy reload highlights risk versus reward to great effect. And the winner is The Skewer from Halo Infinite. No scope. Please, never ever get skewered. Best Music. The nominees are Composed by Lena Rain, who also wrote the music for Celeste, Chicory's music is a perfect match for this artful and therapeutic adventure. There's a broader range here that not only includes chiptune hooks and jamming boss battle themes, but also lovely woodwinds, providing a calming backdrop as you explore and paint the world. If there has ever been a soundtrack that screams culmination, it's Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. Soken's music has been a highlight of the MMO for years, but Endwalker ties together past themes in new and exciting ways, not only drawing on the breadth of all our past adventures, but also beloved themes from classics like Final Fantasy IV. Guilty Gear Strive is all about that rock star aesthetic, and you can't get the full force of that vibe without a soundtrack to match. The energy, shredding guitars, and melodic vocals match the frenetic pace of Guilty Gear's combat. Yes, metal does have a place among the best soundtracks of 2021. Despite having one of the industry's most iconic main themes, sometimes it seems that Monster Hunter doesn't get recognized for the quality of its music. Monster Hunter Rise not only continues the excellence of the series, but raises the bar, this time featuring a more distinct Asian flair. Most notable, though, is just how dynamic it is with individual monster themes rising and falling as you keep up with the hunt. 
Nier has always had phenomenal music, and this remake has given the team the chance to re-record, improve, and add to the scope of its score. Its somber, plaintive vocals are a driving force of its narrative, and its climaxes are absolutely epic. And the winner is Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. Best Trailer the nominees are The Battlefield 2042 reveal trailer rockets across multiple maps and really sells the unique scale of this war, ending in a satisfying wink to a classic memory and any pilot willing to get creative. Cult of the Lamb made a bloody good first impression at Gamescom, with a reveal trailer full of dark spells, spastic gameplay, and irresistible humor. Cuphead's live-action, puppeteered release date announcement for the gorgeous shooter's big DLC is willing to spend big bucks on clever gags, bringing a charm that puts a smile on your face each time you watch it. Elden Ring had a smashing gameplay reveal, but the action RPG story trailer, first shown at the 2021 Game Awards, is full of creepy questions we can't get out of our head before the next gut-clenching From Software adventure. We didn't know what the sequel to God of War would be called for so long, and when Ragnarok finally showed gameplay, it wasn't clear how much we'd see. Following this jam-packed reveal, that 2022 release date seems a bit more likely. First you see Metroid 5 in text, waving away any worries that the announcement of Metroid Dread could be perceived as anything but a big deal. The cutscene and quick gameplay clip that follow perfectly sum up the harrowing experience and its main draw of ballistic survival. The E3 reveal of Outer Worlds 2 is dumb, but it's also supposed to be dumb and make fun of other trailers that are dumb. It remains to be seen if the game will be dumb, but the trailer earns the requisite number of chuckles, and that's a marketing campaign we can get behind. Holding a viewer's attention with one shot isn't as easy as it sounds. This brief glimpse into Planet of Lana covers a lot of ground in a short amount of time and ends on a somber note that makes this dusty trail stand out. Even in screenshots, replaced is eye-catching. Each pixel-perfect picture tells a thousand words, and its reveal trailer asks just as many questions. Masterfully wielding cyberpunk colors and deep shadows, it's cut to near perfection. So long, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's campaign. You had to end eventually, and there are a few ways to sign off more appropriately than opening up your hearts to Sora from Kingdom Hearts in this anticipated but also shocking reveal. The collection is complete. Everyone is finally here. And the winner is Cuphead The Delicious Last Course Release Date Trailer. Look out for the walloping winter rain! And now, the nominees for our 2021 Game of the Year. We debated for a long time whether or not Endwalker should even be eligible for the ultimate prize, but its monumental achievements and extraordinary circumstances demand respect and appreciation. Further improving upon nearly a decade of constant tweaks and adjustments, Final Fantasy XIV is at the top of its game with one of the best stories of all time, with unbelievable payoffs, jaw-dropping bosses and environments, and a soundtrack that somehow surpasses the insane highs of its predecessors. This year, Playground Games brings the Horizon Festival to Mexico, and their brilliant open-world formula has never been better. Exploring the map is an absolute highlight as you bound from the top of a volcano to ruins in the jungle to beachfront resorts, and it's all delightfully drivable with courses that fit seamlessly into the terrain. Whether you're in a tight race through dirt tracks, leaping off a ramp to snag a deviously placed collectible, or trying to survive in the Eliminator, it feels like you can never run out of reasons to return and go for another drive. It's hard to compare Inscription to anything because it's inspiringly original and a perfect example of a game that is more than the sum of its parts. What begins as a satisfying and deep card game is only one element of this unique gem. A meta-narrative connects it all with gameplay mechanics that build in nuanced and meaningful ways. Getting up from the table and exploring the ominous environment, building an overpowered deck, and learning the tale of the four scribes is a compelling rabbit hole that demands your attention and leaves a lasting impact that feels bigger than the game itself. It's not just that It Takes Two is incredibly delightful and emotionally powerful, it's that somehow Hazelight maintains a spontaneous and polished creativity throughout the entire dozen or so hours it takes to mend this family and all their magical failures and dreams. Each tool you're given is fun and inventive, no matter what side of the screen you're on. Each environment shines with tons of goofy details and thrilling surprises. 
With a free pass for any second player to join in, it's one of the easiest adventures of the year to recommend to anyone you know, be they friend, family, or foe. Metroid Dread understands what makes the Metroid series so excellent, including incredibly smooth movement, satisfying abilities, clever secrets, and a tremendous sense of progression. Yet part of why Dread is so remarkable is that it isn't just a rehash of the past. The Emmy fights ensure that the game lives up to its title, serving as intense encounters that persist throughout the game. From a story perspective, Dread provides a menacing and memorable villain in the form of Ravenbeak. The journey does a great job of establishing stakes without being overly verbose or compromising the isolating atmosphere the series is known for. With the intricate and beautiful echoes of the eye, Mobius essentially places Outer Wilds 2 into the original game. This expansion feels like the puzzle piece we didn't know we were missing, the philosophical counter-melody to a song that already felt complete. But Echoes of the Eye doesn't just play the hits, it delivers the same resonant narrative, mystery, and joy of discovery as before, in new, surprising, and sometimes frightening ways. Living up to a beloved classic is always a daunting task, but Double Fine has gone above and beyond with Psychonauts 2. It's a relentlessly creative adventure filled with exciting ideas and challenges. It effortlessly retains the charm of the original with its wonderful cast of characters, while simultaneously raising the bar in nearly every other aspect. Each area you visit is captivating and feels like something out of the mind of a mad genius, and its improved silky smooth movement and refined combat feel better than ever. It's a truly special game that captures our imaginations all over again. Like the B.O.W.'s, our heroes frequently battle, Resident Evil constantly reinvents itself. Village is a tribute to 25 years of innovation and refinement, playing like a greatest hits collection of the franchise. Retaining the first-person perspective and continuing story threads from Resident Evil 7, Village ramps up the action, atmosphere, and exploration through its diverse environments. Lady Dimitrescu is an unforgettable icon that protects her mansion at all costs along with her daughters, while House Beneviento is slow-burn horror at its best. Whether you've played every entry in the series or just now jumping in, Village offers an unforgettable roller coaster ride that's too good to play through only once. Over the years, Housemark has grown a reputation for their arcade style games, but their PS5 debut, Returnal, goes far beyond what any of us expected. Masterfully blending adrenaline pumping action and thought provoking storytelling, Returnal constantly dominated our thoughts over the year, leaving us always hungry for another run. Its gameplay is top tier, incorporating tight gunplay and amazing weapons that are a blast to use and experiment with. Fast and tight movement makes navigating its desolate battlefields a joy, and great roguelite elements give a wonderful sense of choice and consequence, keeping each run fresh and fun. To top it all off, it presents a deeply haunting story full of mystery that keeps you going down the rabbit hole. It can be a daunting challenge, but it's more than worth the time and effort. Shin Megami Tensei V is one tall mountain to climb, yet its relentless difficulty isn't a weak point, but rather serves to highlight the game's many strengths. The combat system is fascinatingly nuanced. Players have to make difficult decisions, thinking hard about the composition of their demonic team, and be well prepared for the many boss fights. It's not just the fighting that makes SMT V so fantastic, though. The exploration is well beyond the standards of the JRPG genre, having you jump and dash through intricately designed areas. SMT5 may have a somber tone, but playing it regularly provides a great feeling of triumph. And the Easy Allies 2021 Game of the Year is... Returnal. Returnal is a game that becomes increasingly gripping the further you dive into it. It uses its roguelite nature to great effect, providing new pieces to its story, cycle after cycle. Refusing to spell everything out in an overly obvious way, Returnal asks the player to come to their own conclusions. Yet what becomes perfectly clear is that the story is deeply introspective, confronting scarring trauma head-on. In that sense, the gameplay and narrative feel inextricably linked. 
It lets you explicitly know up front that the game is, quote, intended to be a challenging experience, and indeed it is. Runs can easily come to an abrupt end, putting you back at the beginning once again. Fighting is a cacophony of sound and neon projectiles. You weave your way through small armies of alien bullets, desperately chipping away at foes that can annihilate carelessness in the blink of an eye. At first, the challenge may seem insurmountable, but if you have the grit to keep digging, the game suddenly becomes manageable as you learn how all of its many pieces fit together. The constant gambles you're encouraged to make become intoxicating as you wonder how the next risk will unfold. Returnal is starkly original, admirably uncompromising, and absolutely unforgettable. Easy Allies is made possible by generous viewers just like you. If you like what you see, check out patreon.com slash easyallies to help us make more. For just $1 a month, you can gain access to weekly updates, spoiler discussions, and exclusive shows. Wow, great video!